past two years, I've looked forward to the nine golden days in September or October here in Thailand where the J Festival takes place. For those of you who are unaware of it, this is a religious festival where people abstain from eating all animal products, namely meat, dairy, and eggs, as well as pungent vegetables like onions and garlic. This is observed by those with Thai Chinese backgrounds based on the beliefs of Taoism to honor the nine emperor gods. And with a Thai Chinese population of over 26 million people, these celebrations are huge, and restaurants and supermarkets across the country offer a plethora of plant-based foods. Food stalls and markets become lined with these yellow flags carrying the J symbol, and the streets of Chinatown become filled with lights, processions, and banners. Yet, even given the size of this festival, I never took part due to my family's religious background. So it was always something that just happened every year, and I gave it little thought. However, I realized that it was the first exposure to veganism in Thailand that I ever had. And now, having been vegan for two years, I have come to greatly appreciate it. With a very small number of the Thai population being vegan year-round for secular purposes, it is not very mainstream to walk into a restaurant and start asking for no meat, dairy, eggs, fish sauce, oyster sauce, shrimp paste, these, because these flavors are quite essential to Thai cuisine and are in the most famous dishes from Pad Thai to Tom Yam to Pad Ka Pao. So as you can imagine, it can be quite hard to order food sometimes. Um, However, I find that by using the word J, it instantly communicates the kind of food I eat, and people understand exactly what I'm talking about. When relatives, friends, and family first find out my, about my diet, I'm met with a lot of surprised, confused, and even impressed faces, which then turn into a lot of questions, which of course I am happy to answer, except for this one instance where somebody once asked me whether a potato was vegan. I believe that there isn't enough talk surrounding veganism in this region, and the issues of animal agriculture are much too important to be getting the small amount of exposure that they do. Southeast Asia is a thriving and vibrant place, and more discussion and awareness needs to be generated around the impacts and implications of these foods. So, supermarkets. Did anybody else enjoy going to the supermarkets when they were younger? I used to love going food shopping, and food has always been one of my biggest interests. My earliest memories were in the kitchens with my grandmother and my mother, cooking meals for the family and baking cakes. And with my mom being half Thai, half English, and my dad being Thai Chinese, I grew up with a mixture of Western and Asian foods. So some nights we had roast chicken and potatoes, and the next night, rice and lab, which is a spicy pork salad. No matter what recipe we wanted to cook, whether it be beef wellingtons or pasta carbonara, these ingredients were always so convenient to obtain. However, this wasn't always the case when my grandma first moved here from the UK in the 1960s. This is a picture of her with my mom and my two uncles when they were very, very young, which was almost 50 years ago. And sorry, mom, for revealing that fact. <laughs> Back then, there were very few supermarkets, and Western cuisine was mostly only found in high-end restaurants in hotels. Also, dairy was very uncommon, with only one milk company existing at the time, which was the Thai Danish milk brand, established in 1962. However, being an English woman, my grandmother was insistent on having her children drink milk growing up, so she had it delivered directly from the farm to the house. The milk didn't even come in bottles or boxes, but in small plastic bags, showing how embryonic, how embryonic the stages of this industry was. Even the neighbors were surprised, asking my grandmother questions as to why she was feeding her children milk after infancy, because they were used to giving their children breast milk, and only that. Now, I see students walking in and out of school, clutching milk boxes in their hands. Dairy has become such a huge industry here and has become a part of everyday life as if it had been for generations, all in the space of 50 years. This has been a part of the westernization of Asian diets that has been occurring across the continent for the past few decades. It means that diets are shifting from the traditional predominance of rice to those higher in meat, dairy, and temperate zone products like wheat, potatoes, and apples. 
the Thai diet itself, the average share of rice in the Thai diet itself has decreased by 60% in the past two decades, whilst the share of potatoes, which are indeed vegan, have increased by tenfold. This has been influenced by economic growth, urbanization, and of course, globalization. A paper by Prabhu Pingali with the UN Food and Agriculture Organization categorizes this change in diets into two main parts. The first one he calls income-induced diet diversification, where higher incomes leads to the variation of diets whilst, remaining, whilst maintaining predominantly traditional features. However, urbanization and globalization pushes this further, and the diets it describes can no longer conform to traditional local habits. Of course, this has also been driven by the supermarket revolution in Asia, where the modernization of the food retail sector has replaced traditional markets and small family-run shops. So from personal experience and the people I grew up around, I really have noticed that animal products are highly sought after, with steaks, cheeses, and yogurts looked to as luxury goods compared to their more normal status in Western countries. I've seen such a fixation on new American brands coming into Thailand. For example, in 2010, when Krispy Kreme first opened, lines stretched for hundreds of meters down the street, and people paid others to wait in line for them, all for these simple glazed donuts. Similar buzz was also created with brands like Ben & Jerry's and Garrett Popcorn. So with such trends towards animal products, Veganism has quite an interesting place, and I often feel as if I am really going against the grain. As a person raised on a lot of fish, chicken, and pork, I previously could not fathom giving these foods up. I used to have birthday barbecues with plates piled high with steaks, sausages, and ribs. And with my mother being a flight attendant, foreign European foods were also a huge part of my upbringing, from Scottish nettle cheese to French crepes and waffles. I always saw these foods in such a positive light due to the media, branding, advertisements, and of course the cultures I was raised in. I had the idolization of Western foods coming from my Thai surroundings with, the, with its traditional prominence in the English foods that were cooked for me. Never did I ever consider that there were any negative impact to my dietary habits. I used to not take vegan seriously because I thought that it was so radical and extreme that people wouldn't eat any animal products at all. However, having seen what this industry really holds, I now fully understand why they do what they do. So, climate change. This has always been a really big issue in science and geography lessons. And when I was 10, I used to think that the world was going to end in 2012 because of it. And oftentimes, CO2 emissions are attributed to cars, planes, and factories, which is very valid, given that the transport sector alone contributes to 13% of global CO2 emissions. However, a study by the UN Food and Agriculture Organization found that the meat industry contributes to 18% of these global CO2 emissions, which is a huge number. I was really surprised to find this out and was wondering why the meat industry wasn't acknowledged for being a key contributor to global warming um, before this. Also, cow manure contributes to two-thirds of the world's nitrous oxide emissions, which is a gas that has 300 times the climate-changing power as carbon dioxide. Furthermore, the meat industry takes up a lot of land and water with 30% of the world's land use being for animal agriculture. Also, with all the, it's also been a key cause of deforestation, with 550 million meters squared of forest being cleared as of 2014 for the meat industry. Okay, interestingly enough, in terms of the CO2 emission intensities, as you can see, East and Southeast Asia is a region with one of the highest CO2 emission intensities. However, most prominent to me is the amount of water pollution that the animal agriculture industry causes. Earlier this year, the largest ever dead zone in the ocean 
was recorded in the Gulf of Mexico, the size of New Jersey. This wild, wide-scale death of marine life was caused by the pouring in of manure, toxins, and fertilizers from intense factory farms of a meat supplier in the area. Overall, in the past decade, this one company contributed contributed to 104 million tons of manure being dumped into the ocean. If you think about it, this is huge across the globe as this was the effect of only one company that supplies to the likes of McDonald's and KFC. However, the biggest driver in my conversion to veganism was my love for animals. So previously, I had seen snippets of videos in slaughterhouses, but I was surprised by it, but the effects never really lasted very long. And I was back to eating meat within the, well, the next day. However, I came to realize that it was entirely hypocritical of me to be outraged by events like the Yulin Dog Meat Festivals, when the exact same practices happen every day behind the closed doors of factory farms. From videos online that I saw of farm animals interacting with people and performing cognitive tests, I realized that they are no different to the pets I have at home. They all have the same ability to feel pain, to feel emotion, and the want to live. So no way did I want to contribute to the maiming, confinement, and torture that these animals go through anymore. However, something that wasn't obvious to me was the cruelty that exists in the dairy and egg industry. Because there isn't a piece of meat on your plate where you can't see the death, doesn't mean that the cruelty doesn't exist. So the most obvious fact of the dairy industry that I never thought about before was that to produce milk, mother cows have to get pregnant and give birth. So these, these cows go through constant cycles of artificial insemination and pregnancy to keep up high yields of lactation. After birth, the calf forms deep maternal bonds with its mother, but it's immediately ripped away, causing huge amounts of stress and trauma. And if the calf is a male, it is, ab it is of no use to the milk, milk industry, and it's raised for about a week on milk substitutes and killed for veal. Equally, the egg industry is just as inhumane. It is known that the eggs that we eat haven't been fertilized, which is true, However, in the egg industry, eggs still need to hatch to pro continue producing egg-laying hens. However, if a male chick is hatched, they are also of no use to the egg industry and are thrown into macerators to be killed and ground for meat. So to me, being vegan wasn't about becoming a protesting activist, but it was about connecting the facts and doing what I thought, thought was right. I know that as one person, my choice not to eat meat, dairy, or eggs isn't gonna have some huge global impact, but it was about me no longer wanting to personally contribute to the inhumanities that I knew existed. Food is at the core of Asian cultures, and as food moves, the culture and habits move with it. So let's make sure that this is in the right direction at the, and that we become more aware of the impacts of our foods for the health of our world, our animals, and of course, ourselves. Thank you.